today on Larry King Now, my friend Craig Ferguson on his new history-themed talk show. It has no academic value, this show. <laughs> it has no, there's no real kind of, it's not like if, if a, his, a historical figure wins on Join or Die, they suddenly get, you know, a prize or anything <laughs> like that. You know, it's just, it's to stimulate discussion. On his Grammy nomination. I, I'm very grateful just to be nominated and all the other things. <laughs> okay. well, well, we congratulate you. Thank you, okay. or, or never mind. Plus, if you thought during the first segment that I was nervous, irritable, ill-prepared. Yeah. Of course, my blanket had not arrived. Yeah, look, blankies here. From New York. It's penis-y looking. I'd never noticed before, but it is a little penis-y looking. Uh, a, li a little pe that's a little penis to me. Oh, oh yeah. That's literally all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All next on Larry King Now. <laughs> Since his departure as the host of The Late Late Show in 2014, Craig Ferguson shows no signs of slowing down. My longtime friend has served as the Emmy-winning host of Celebrity Name Game. His 2015 comedy special, Just Being Honest, recently garnered him his third Grammy nomination in five years. And now America's favorite Scotsman is hosting the new historical talk show, Join or Die, which airs Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern on the History Channel, a show of which... I was proud to be a part of. You were great on it, Larry, because you remembered a lot of the things that people were just were reading I'm about old, in history. Cause yeah, because you're old. You're an old guy, and you can remember things. <laughs> That's good. I, by the way, I'm very happy to be in your house like oh. this. This is the first time you invited me to your <laughs> house. Well, it's no, you never nice. wanted to come before. You. Well, you know, I, I don't travel. I didn't know it was this swanky. Oh. <laughs> also, I didn't know it was in Glendale, oh. the Paris of Los Angeles. <laughs> All right, break down the show's subject matter. How did... Do How you know did Join or Die come about? Here's, well, Join or Die is the name of the tattoo. It was, you know, I got this tattoo. Benjamin Franklin uh, drew this for the Pennsylvania Gazette in 1754. It's the first uh, symbol of the colonies that united and eventually became the United States. And he said Join or Die. Join or Die. It was a kind of old wives' tale that you cut up a worm. If you get it together before sunset, uh, then it would survive. And it was about, you know, he didn't believe that, I don't think. I don't think he was an idiot. But I think that what he was doing is saying, look, this is a metaphor. We've got to get together now before it's too late. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the, his, I got this tattoo when I became a citizen. Right. The show itself is a very much in what you have always done. It is a Socratic disc discussion. It's not five monologues. When you look at shows on TV now, nobody wants to talk about anything. They just all say what they're going to say, and, and they even have a thing, media training, on point, stay on point. The pundits. Yeah, never, <laughs> never change your mind. And like, you people that are, you're not, you're not even talking about anything, you're just yelling. Uh, so it's a desire to have a genuine discussion on TV. It'll never work, I understand that, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> but when I was on, it was myth or fact. Yeah. You had the big, you know, the Loch Ness Monster. Right, right, and right. And we all discussed, we had an astronaut. Yeah. You had quite a panel. With yeah, the many. astronaut was real. You understand yeah, that, no, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the audience votes. Yeah, the audience votes at the end. Now, listen, here's the thing. It has no academic value, this show. <laughs> it has no, there's no real kind of, it's not like if, if a, his, a historical figure wins on Join or Die, they suddenly get, you know, a prize or <laughs> anything like that. You know, it's just, it's to stimulate discussion. The, the format of the show is to stimulate discussion. And it's not even a necessarily reach a conclusion. It reaches right. a conclusion because it's a TV show but and it's got it. But people at home will talk sure. about it. Sure. Yeah. You normally don't promote things. It's nice to see you promoting Well, something. you know, here's the thing. I like this one. Uh, and it, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought I'd promote it. I actually think it, it's an interesting idea, too. I think we... I think we got some of them right. We've made 22 already, and I think we should... We're going to have to make more. They've ordered some more. They have? I'll yeah. come back. Yeah, you, you should come back. You have return guests? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll come back. I yeah. loved it. Right, it was, good. We'll come back and fun. we'll discuss some, some other things. Some the favorite uh, Egyptian pharaoh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like... It, I, it looks also, because other times on your other shows, yeah. you look like, I'm, I'm doing this, I can do it, it's easy. Yeah. But in this one, it looks like you're really double enjoying it. Well, I do enjoy it because I think 
uh, history for me is very interesting. It's like psychotherapy for the entire human species. Correct. That's what it is. I mean, if you go to therapy, you, you discuss your past and look at... We're all, all history. Right, we're all part of it. So it is, it's the single most hopeful, uh, I think, or, or beneficial uh, science history because it tells us why we behaved, what we did, what, how we can avoid it in the future or, or repeat it in the future. It's, it's essential. All right, if history repeats itself, what do you think, what is Craig Ferguson's thoughts on the current political goings-on? Well, first of all, the, the, the current political goings-on are fascinating uh, to everyone, of course. <clears throat> you know, because you've got everybody yelling. For me, the media is complicit in this odd circus in the sense that people will say to you, who are you going to endorse? I'm like, it's what, like 10 months, nine months to the election? If you ask me a week before, then I'll say, mm, I think having looked at all the options, this is who I'm going to endorse. This is who I think it should be. But I think if you endorse, unless you're a career politician or a career pundit, why would you endorse uh, anyone this far out? Because you haven't, there hasn't been enough discussion. Surely the idea of an election and a campaign is about discussion. True. You know, so I think the idea of endorsing people at this early stage is ridiculous. However, I will say this. In a historical context, if you look at Germany, in the uh, early 1930s, there was a joke candidate that everyone thought, too extreme, too jokey, an idiot, looks like an idiot, he's funny looking, he was fun. But what happened was that there were enough people that were behind him, and then you get the left, the communists and the social democrats, and they couldn't keep their shit together, as it always happens with the left. They always split, and because they couldn't keep themselves together, it created an opportunity for someone who, under a sane uh, political <laughs> campaign, would never have been elected, but actually got the majority. It's, it's a fascinating look at history. You say it's, your show is based entirely on facts, unlike <laughs> the news. <laughs> for example, plenty of pundits, comedians, have called out the Republican field for endlessly praising Ronald Reagan for not really getting into it. What do you, let's put it this way, what do you think of Trump? Well, I think Trump is, uh, is symptomatic of uh, despair that Americans have in uh, Washington right now. I think that's what it is. I think what I personally feel about... I, he doesn't appeal to me personally, but, but I think he is symptomatic of a despair and, and, uh, and a lack of trust that many Americans have in the process. And I think it would, you know, politicians would do well in my opinion, to try and gain the trust and respect of the American public, not only during a campaign, but actually while they're in Washington, you know, while idea. they're doing their job. Up next, I'll ask Craig what it's like to be a Grammy-nominated artist, how he thinks James Corden is doing as host of The Late Late Show. Don't go away. Is there any phenomena that we have not talked about you think should be talked about in greatest unexplained phenomena in history. You got any, Larry? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Ah. <laughs> I tell you, I think I can explain Donald Trump to you. Because I was talking to I was talking to a journalist from Canada, and he asked me about Donald Trump. They want they always want you to badmouth Donald Trump, which I'm happy to do a lot of the time. I know uh, him long, I know him for years. What I what I said, he said, you know, he's really got big numbers in the polls, and everyone's going to see him. And I said, no, no, man, you got it wrong. What you are witnessing is Americans enjoying the pageant of their election process. That's all they're enjoying the circus. Beautiful. Mm. It's like thirty thousand people went to see him in Birmingham, Alabama. You been to Birmingham? On a Tuesday night, there's not a lot to do. <laughs> so, Birmingham, hey, Donald Trump's gonna be at this stadium and there's gonna be a fly past? I'd go! If you thought during the first segment that I was nervous, irritable, ill-prepared... Yeah. Because my blanket had not arrived... Yeah, look, blankies here. ...from New York. It's penis -y looking. I'd never noticed before, but it is a little penis -y looking. Uh, a, li a little pe that's a little penis to me. Oh, oh yeah. That's literally, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah.
What is this Scotsman? <laughs> Never mind. You've had only three Grammy nominations in five years. What happened the other two years? I don't know. Was, I don't know. I let myself down, I guess. Now, I, this I, is being aired after the Grammys. So, do you think you won? Yeah, I, I, I'm very grateful just to be nominated and all the other things. <laughs> okay. well, well, we congratulate you. Thank you, okay. or, or never mind. Do you feel like a rock star? You tour, you have howling fans, you're part of a Grammy nomination. What are you? Well, you know, and I have had a drug and alcohol problem and been married a couple of times. So, yeah, yeah, maybe you, Daddy is a bit of a rock star. You are a rock star. Yeah. All right, I know you're going to say no, but I've got to ask it. Do you ever miss hosting The Late Late Show? I did once. I did once. When I heard Trump was running, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, really, that's like when Cheney shot his lawyer in the face. It's just a gift. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like when Cheney shot his lawyer in the face, I thought, I, phoned, I actually phoned him up and said, I'm coming in late today. It, it, obviously, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> and, and, and when I heard Trump was running, I, I kind of changed it a little bit now because it's... I, I, now, I think, oh, God, I'm glad I'm not doing the show because all of that's still going on. And it's and it's worse, and I, I don't miss it really at all. You watch James Corden? I don't watch any late night television. I have young kids, so I'm in. You know, Modern Family is my late night show. Uh, there was some controversy when CBS chose another white male. You know, we've never had a female. Well, we had Joan Rivers hosted once. Right. So you don't watch late night. Do you have any thoughts on it? Um, not really. I, I think that you know. I mean, I've met James Corden and I've seen bits and pieces of what he's done. On and theater, he, he was seems a, great. He, he won know, a Tony in New York. Very nice guy. He's clearly a gifted performer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. Very different show though than you did. Yeah, yeah. All right, As well, it should be though. I mean, yeah, you, well, I mean you, you don't want to have a pantomime horse yeah, like well, robot yeah. skeleton. <laughs> what do you make of Hillary's problem with young people? Or, or I, I agree with that. I have a problem with young people too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of Bernie? Uh, I, I'm very, I'm very fond of Bernie. I think he's <laughs> very crazy looking. I enjoy that. I, 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 I must admit, I, I think he'd be great to play in a sketch. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah, well, <laughs> you once said, "I have a deep and profound mistrust of all politicians." Mm, I do. Don't that you? That still holds true. Yeah, oh yes. So yeah. there's no candidate you're favoring yet? Not yet, but it's too far away from the right. election. I'm going to give you a list of candidates, and I would like a Craig Ferguson thumbnail sketch. Uh, okay. Where did that come from, thumbnail sketch? I don't know. I guess I think in the old days, people, used, when they couldn't afford pencils, they, they sketched with their thumb. Sketched with their thumb <laughs> in mud. It's my two cents. <laughs> okay. I'll name them your thoughts. All right. Ted Cruz. Oh, a exciting, probably a thrilling lover. <laughs> you see him as good in bed or something? He might be. I don't know. Mary maybe I know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm not saying. Okay. Hillary Clinton. Mm. 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 <laughs> um, Spanx. She wears Spanx. Spanx. Yeah. Jeb Bush. Sorry? Jeb Bush, you heard of him? Mm. Don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's lovely. <laughs> lovely? Yeah. Bernie, you already said you like Bernie. I do like Bernie, I think. Well, you know, I'm, you know, I vote in Vermont, so uh, I'm familiar. I've been familiar with Bernie for a long oh. time. You vote in Vermont? Yeah, I've, I'm registered to vote in Vermont. I've, I have a house in Vermont. I vote in Vermont. Have you voted for Bernie? I, it's a secret ballot, I'm not telling you. But he's been my senator since I was an American citizen. So you do the math. <laughs> Trump, well, you already said what you thought. Well, I, I, I you know, I, he's fascinating. Uh, he's a fascinating phenomenon going on. Could you vote for him? <laughs> I, I could legally, uh, yeah. What do you mean legally? Le well, system. legally, I'm allowed to. I'm an American citizen. I can vote to him, for him if I want. Well, I ask you, could you, in a moment of despair? No, I don't think so. Okay. And finally, Marco Rubio. He has the name that most sounds like a professional acrobat. And I think that that's worth discussion. And now on the high wire... Marco Rubio! <laughs> hey, what's the coming to go, everybody? <laughs> coming up, we'll play a game of If You Only Knew. And did Craig recently get dismissed from jury duty for being a, quote, wise-ass? Mm. Don't go away. 
Craig Ferguson. Don't hey, Larry, forget. sorry, to, I got to interrupt you. You know you're wearing black braces with a very dark short, black suspenders, well, very dark gold. shirt. Yeah, I know, but it, it makes it look like you're wearing nipple tassels. You got to be careful. You got to wear a bright pair of suspenders with a dark shirt. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you this. You're the suspenders no, but I, guy. But I wore a bright tie. Well, but you, now it looks like you're uh, an ecclesiastical gentleman with wearing nipple tassels. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Why is he here? <laughs> okay. Uh, you tweeted that you were dismissed from jury, uh, jury duty because you were a wise ass. Mm. What did you do? I guess I argued uh, the the uh, the case with one of the lawyers and they, so the they insurance them. company. It was an insurance company. It's a medical malpractice thing, and I, and I argued with the uh, insurance company's lawyers that perhaps they shouldn't be getting paid and they should just give the money to the guy that needs the money. No one was arguing the outcome of the case. They were just trying to prove who was at fault. I was like, well, who cares who's at fault? Let's just give the guy some money. He needs some money. So that's not the law, apparently. By the way, Join or Die, which premieres uh, Thursday, February 18th at 11 o'clock Eastern. On what show am I on? Uh, one, of, one of them. One, one of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's play a quick game of If You Only Knew. I just... Is that a game where you, where you say, if, if you only knew and I'd say... You oh, answer. All right. Okay. Is that really a game? Yeah, I, guess, <laughs> I don't know. They call it a game. They write it out for all me. Right, I, all it's right. not my thing. Okay, okay. Okay, you you follow my tweets, so I yeah, I, I know I do. I love your tweets. All right, what's something that always makes you laugh? Uh, fat people with tiny little feet. <laughs> <laughs> something that always ticks you off? Um, bullies. If you could have one deceased historical figure on Join or Die, who would you want? I wouldn't want any of them. They would smell terrible. No. Okay. <laughs> If you could have one living guest on Join or Die, who do you want? You. You have me already. Who else? Well, can you, does that mean you can't come back? No, I'll come back, but I'm... Right. Mean, okay. If you could travel back in time, what era would you like to visit? Ooh, well, it's limited to modern dentistry and antibiotics, so maybe last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, thank God. Give me a guilty pleasure. That you have. Well, is that you want me to give you one now? Like no, 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 no. Oh, right. I, you, you, I thought you were asking. I thought it was a weird way of asking for a. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> a, give me a guilty pleasure. Now? Can't we wait till a commercial break? Your most embarrassing moment. Well, we nearly had. I think that okay, was okay, it right yeah. there, yeah. The best thing about being famous. Um, I don't know that there's much good about it. No, you get a good table at the restaurant, don't you? Well, if I don't get a good table in a restaurant, I'll go to another restaurant. It's L.A. It's not like we're short of restaurants. I've never bought into that, getting a good table at well, a restaurant. What's the worst thing about being famous? Um, the sense of ownership that some people have uh, about how you should behave and, That's and true, how, how yeah. you should think. It's, it's very distressing to me. Can you do any impressions? Uh, no. No. What's your most cherished memory? I lied to you there, you know that. Because you know, I you used do. to do you on the late night show. That's right, yeah. do me, come on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It used to make me laugh because it is nothing like you, but it, people seem to get the idea. What's your most cherished memory? The birth of my children. And you gave, still in my history, the funniest answer in the history of Larry King Live. You want to do it again? All right then, ask What? Does a Scotsman wear under his kilt? On a good day, lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was one of the great moments. Tell me about the beard and the, and the shock of gray hair. Well, that's uh, just, it, it's a, it was a shock to me. You uh, look magisterial almost. Do I really? You could play a king. I mean, a real king. A real king? You could play like... No, you know, King John, King Henry, King Louis. Right, King, King, yeah, King William. I look get at that idea look about you. What? You have that kingly look. Well, I thank you very much indeed. Very now, well would said. Would you care for a guilty pleasure? <laughs> never far from you. <laughs> Next, we'll talk about the third installment of How to Train a Dragon. Oh, yeah, I love and that. we'll wrap things up with some fan questions for Craig from social media. Don't click away. Don't click away. Back with Craig Ferguson. Don't forget, Join or Die airs Thursdays at 11 o'clock on the History Channel. It will be a massive hit.
Will it? Do you think it'll be, you think it'll be a hit? Yeah, it, it will. It's yeah, a lot of so. fun. I think it's a good show. Good but that doesn't slot. necessarily mean it'll be a hit. I no, know. I know, I but think it's, it's a good... I think it's a good show, though. You're reprising your role as Gobbler in the second season. Gobbler! Gobbler, not Gobbler! Oh, Gobbler. What the hell? Is that they because... They put an L in it. It's not Gobbler! It's Gobbler. It's Gobbler! Gobbler! Gobbler's a, a completely... It's Gobbler's a Scottish word for a guilty pleasure. You won't leave it alone, will you? Well... Okay. What's the plot in the new one? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> they don't tell me that. It's is, like, you know, I don't have, you know, Jeffrey Katzenberg doesn't call me and go, Hey, Craig, what do you think of this? Is it true you're producing or writing a movie that's a thriller? Are you writing? Yeah, um, you know, a couple of things are around, yeah. How about a new stand-up special? Yeah, I've got a new stand-up together, so I'll do one at the end of this year, I think. Going to tour? Yeah, I've been to, I toured a lot at the end of last year, too much. I did, a, I did like 50, 60 dates. Do you like stand-up? Is it, or do you do rat a -tat? Do you do Seinfeld? What's your stand-up like? It's kind of like this, except you're not here. And I stand up. But I just kind of, you know, I talk. Cause I used to, I used to try and you know like remember it all in order, and then I thought, oh, f they don't know, and <laughs> they don't know the script, so I'll just keep going for an hour and a half, and if I say funny stuff, it'll be fine. Do you, is every show different? Yeah, a little bit. Some, some you kind of you lapse into a routine, but most of the time they they change a little bit. Uh, lately, uh, Bill Maher, Jerry Seinfeld say they don't like uh, playing colleges anymore because of this politically correct atmosphere. Do you play colleges? Yeah, I've played them. I've played them. I, I don't, you know, I don't pay much attention to, you know, what people say after I'm done. Look, the way I feel like if I get paid and leave without any physical harm happening to me, mm. you know, I mean, if they hired me to say stuff, it's not a secret what's going to happen. I like, do. you know, it's not like, oh, this Craig Ferguson, is he, do you think he might cuss? I, I'm going to cuss, you know, but even if I don't cuss, you're going to think I'm cussing. So it's going to happen. I don't well, I'm I don't not talking about, about cussing, but the jokes about racial, racial jokes or... Well, look, if I can't defend a joke, I won't say it. So, I uh, you know, I, if I, I, I never do a joke that I feel I can't defend. Okay, here's some social media questions. Okay. Let's recover 14 on Twitter. Would you ever consider letting your admirers get you a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Yes, uh, please do. I'm on the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame. Are you really? You yeah, of course. I'd love to be on that. Do you know how much that would piss off guys I went to high school with? <laughs> I'm all about that. How do we do this? I don't know how it happens. All right, I'll pay. I'll get do you it. pay? I don't think so. Oh, well, okay. Thomas Jackson on Facebook. Being the fan of Doctor Who that you are, would you consider trying out to be the next Doctor or maybe even appearing on the show? It's not something that I feel I need to do, no. No, you're a fan of Doctor Who. Yes, I like the show. I mean, I grew up watching it, you know, and, and actually a very old friend of mine is now plays the part yeah, of the nice Doctor. guy we had him yeah, on. Yeah, he's a terrific guy. Jessica Lyons, 97, on Twitter. Will you be going back to the Late Late Show as a guest? I imagine it will happen at some point. Yeah. And be, they ought to invite you. Be I think they have done. I mean, we just haven't, you know, haven't put it together yet. At West Kempton on Twitter, how's Jeff Peterson doing? Oh, the skeleton robot yeah. turned off and sits in my office, <laughs> like a lot of people. <laughs> Alex turned Cuttrell. off in my office. <sighs> Alex Cottrell on Facebook. How much gel do you use to get your hair like that? Like this? Yeah. I use Bro Cream. You know, That's bro the brand? Yeah, bro cream. It's a little like, dab will do you. Yeah, well, I use a big dab, uh, but it's just like a scoop of bro cream. Because I figure bro cream is what the uh, pilots wore during the war, because uh, they were called the bro cream boys, you know? And I figure if it's a hair product good enough to beat the Nazis, it's good enough to do my hair. Thank you very much. Well put. Thank you. At OG Stink Baby on Twitter. OG Stink Baby? What's your favorite kind of pizza? Favorite kind of pizza? Yeah, you could have, you know, anchovy pizza you could have. Yeah, I understand the question. It's like, does it's anyone it's give a it's shit? It's uh, all right. Um, I don't know, you know. I mean, sometimes... I, I like, like cheese. This tomato well, cheese. Well, I, I stopped eating the animal products, so pizza's a little bit of a problem Wait for me a minute. right now. Oh, you're a vegan? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I don't want you to start, you know, going on at me. Wait right. a minute. You don't eat any... You won't eat an egg like that's an animal product. You won't eat... I'll eat honey. You'll eat honey. Yeah, I'll eat honey. Yeah, that's an animal product. But I don't, I don't like eating critters or anything that squirts out of them. I kind of went off it. I'm never say, never say never, but 
I don't do it. I haven't done give it for a, a while. T- give me a typical Ferguson dinner. Uh, rice and beans. No, rice <laughs> Are you and saying you hate Mexico, Larry? Is that what no, I love rice and right, beans. Right, that's what I'm saying then, rice and beans. Refried beans is one it's of the fantastic, great dishes yeah. of all time. Yeah, grilled vegetables, a bit of rice, beans, it's fantastic. And Lee Brandt on Facebook. Will you be writing more books? You're a terrific writer. Well, now that I mean, he's called me a terrific writer, how could I stop? I'm actually writing one right now. So the thing is about writing a book, though, I think I'm writing a book, and then some, and as this has happened before, I've thought of writing a book, and I find out I'm not. <laughs> I'm what just, is- I'm writing two chapters of some shit that's never going to happen. But right now, I'm in, uh, you know, Peter Cook, who I, you know I loved Peter. Peter Cook used to say a great thing. Whenever he heard someone say, I'm writing a book, he would always say, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I think I'm writing a book right now. I don't know. You think you're I right. I think I am. I'm about four chapters in, and I think it might be going somewhere, but who's to say? Fergie, I love you. I love you too, Larry. You're the best. You're a guilty pleasure. I want to, th- <laughs> I want to thank my guest, the great Craig Ferguson. Join or Die airs Thursday nights at 11 p.m. on History Channel. You can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. I do this. Uh, tell them about Sunday night when you do it. It's my two cents every Sunday. Oh, every night. Sunday night, it's my two cents on. Yeah, Twitter. on Twitter, you're great Thursday. at that. Oh just man. Thoughts, just thoughts. It's just thoughts. It's thoughts. It's you great. It's like too. it's like having a hyperactive child in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you leave that in. <laughs>